Hi, this is Nancy with Quilting with Nancy. Hope you're all having a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Um, not to be the weather channel or anything, but it's still pretty chilly here in Michigan, although I know it's colder in some other places like Minnesota and that kind of stuff. And Canada, now that I think of it. Don't know why I went there, but I did. So thank you all for joining me. I see some people are chatting yet. Yes, it's playing now, Sonia, so you should be able to see it. So I want to talk to you today about a few things um, coming up, some things that I think are important. And then I also want to talk to you about this gorgeous new fabric collection from Jason Yenter, in particular about the pattern, the um, quilt kit. Um, everything, oh, Bill says it sounds good. All right, so we're there. All right, so starting with, I want to talk a little bit about my retreat. It is now March 12th. On April 12th, my retreat starts. This is my first ever retreat. This is on point on the lake, quilting with Nancy in a beautiful location with these really cool houses that they call cottages, but they got kitchens and living rooms a whole bit. Um, right on Lake Michigan in beautiful Grand Haven, Michigan. You just can't get any more gorgeous than that. The weather in April, you know, we never sure what we're going to get. We could be swimming in Lake Michigan. Okay, that's not true. There's no way you're ever swimming in Lake Michigan in April, no matter what it looks like outside. But we can walk down by the beach and we can work on our quilt. So I want to show you the three quilts that are kind of the retreat quilts. Keep it in mind, you could work on your own stuff, but this is what I'm going to be teaching to the whole group. So the idea is that everybody is going to be making nine patch units, and I want everybody to share what they're making, and then you can make the easy quilt, the intermediate, or the advanced. So this is what I call the easy quilt. So it is probably double size, wouldn't be that hard to make it any larger. You can see my nine patches, the nine patches I'm making with my painted fabrics, so the um, ones that I use my gel press plate on. And then this particular quilt I used for my setting tri setting squares and triangles, some of Sue Penn's fabric, because I love Sue Penn's fabric, all the layers and the, the super, it's just beautiful stuff. And of course, I love Sue too. Um, hi from... Oh, Quitman, Texas. I thought it was like Quiltman, Texas. I'm like, how'd you get that name? All right, so that's the beginner version. This is the intermediate version. So that one's already been quilted. My friend Karen Giles got it quilted for me. Um, this is what I'm calling the intermediate version. So this one, a little bit more traditional in color. I used a floral on the setting triangles, and it was technically supposed to have setting squares, but I ended up liking it better with another large nine patch unit. So this one, same nine patches being used in the other one, but with this, you bump up the volume by making that super cool pieced sashing. This is what I would call the intermediate. Um, somebody did ask me, is the pattern going to be available if you don't go to the retreat? And the answer is no. Um, the pattern for all three of these will only be available. It's kind of like you're at the retreat. This is what you get. If you don't go to the retreat, then you don't get it. And I'm sorry, but you know, there's got to be some sort of lines to draw. This is the advanced one. And this is the one that kind of started it all. I would like to have said that we're all going to make this quilt but probably not. That would probably scare away more people than it would bring in. This is called a Jack's chain. And the idea here, same nine patches, but lots and lots and lots of set in triangle points and then the large hexagon. So that's a big eight and a half inch hexagon. And then the nine patches go around it. And I'm using this cool batik fabric. Um, I didn't, I ended up running out of this brighter one. So I'm also using, I'm going to turn it over. And you're going to see that I'm using this kind of fabric here too. It doesn't show the rings quite as well. You can see the rings better here. So of course I'd be there and help you pick out your fabrics and stuff like that. But that would be the advanced one. So, um, you know, and depending on which quilt you choose and your skill level, you might get time to work on other projects because our schedule for the retreat will be like from nine until five or something, the teaching part of it. Then there'll be a lot of free time and some other things going on and games and prizes and stuff like that. And oh yeah, we got to eat at some point in time. So if you're interested, um, the link is below. You can go to its event B, click on that and you can find out all the prices for it, all the more information. If you got any questions or concerns, just let me know. And that's what I'm here for, right? Number two is I've got a new website. My 
OnPoint-TV website is where you can, you know, find out more about me and my teaching and stuff like that. And that's where you can get my books, my pin cushions, things like that. But we have for a long time been wishing that we could change our website to something that's a little easier to remember. And the easier to remember is quiltingwithnancy.com. Kind of pretty simple. I think everybody can remember that, right? Quiltingwithnancy.com. You go there. You can find out more about the retreats. You can find out more about classes that I teach. We don't have a schedule of like where I'm going to be in different places, but that'll be coming soon. But Gina's not been feeling well. She got the vid otherwise known as the COVID. Um, so she's kind of resting, but we do have a new website. So if you got any, you know, interested in any of my books or patterns or things like that, you can go to quiltingwithnancy.com. Speaking of where I'm going to be in places, I just got my contract for teaching in Daytona 2024. It's in February for American Quilt Society. So the AQS show in Daytona, and this is what's going to be really fun about it. Something I've never taught when I've been traveling around. I've taught it at the shop um, and I teach it as a Zoom class every month for members. But I'm going to be teaching all electric quilt designing classes. Really, really excited about that. So if you're not sure what electric quilt is, just know that for the most part, that's what I use to design all my quilts. Um, and if you've got it and you want to know more about it, that's where one of my memberships might come in. So if you go to my website or my YouTube channel or my, yeah, my website or my my YouTube channel, you can find the join button that tells you a little bit more about the membership. What does membership entail? There's three levels of it. And it's the middle designer level is for those that want to learn how to design their own quilts using electric quilt. So that's an opportunity for every month. You get to do that when you're a member and or just found I'm going to be teaching in Daytona. I actually will be teaching here in Grand Rapids at the AQS show too. So if you happen to come to AQS Grand Rapids, you can meet me there or down in Daytona. Um, lots of Texas and I got a quilted poodle. Yeah, it's pretty good stuff, huh? All right. Thank you everybody for chatting. I really appreciate that. Don't forget, you know, like Georgia's not on yet, but normally she would say lots of thumbs up and comments on the video and subscribe and share and all that kind of stuff. All right. I'm looking at my list. Okay. Now we can talk about the quilt of the hour. This, it's not done. So these are just some of the blocks that I've made. This is Prism by Jason Yunter for the In the Beginning fabric line. Um, Jason Yunter does some exceptional, exceptional fabrics. All of his fabrics have lots of color and depth and a lot of movement to them. I absolutely love them. And that beginner slideshow kind of showed you some of them. But let me show you a little bit more. So here's some blocks that I've finished. Um, and how the, the fabric, you know, the way it goes together, the fabric choices, it's kind of watery color. You know, it's not like high contrast, black and white, definitely no solids in here. Um, this is right up my alley. And one of the reasons I like fabrics with so much movement is, did you know that when you use fabrics, it may be solids, you can see every mistake you make. If your points don't match up beautifully, and I'm trying to find one that didn't. Here, this one. This one right here. This point, he, he's not matched up. He goes over a little bit. You know, no big deal in real world. But if I had done that with a solid fabric, I would see that from across the room. When you're using fabrics like these to do your piecing, not only do you get beautiful quilts out of it, but it also helps you kind of cover any mistakes. I'm picking up this one. All right, Bill said I was picking up a second mic. I think I have just made it go away. All right, hopefully it does. We've got sound and we were pretty happy about that. All right, so this is the one of the couple of the blocks too. These are the border fabrics. So when you're looking at this quilt, there are two colorways. This would be the blue colorway. Each one of these border strips is, you know what, I never measured it. Let's see. This border strip is going to measure about 10 inches and there are four of them on the piece, the length of fabric. So you actually are going to cut this length of fabric and then we'll be doing a mitered border for it. And I am doing the blue colorway. The blue colorway, if you look behind me, is also going to have this blue for the sashings. The black colorway 
you can see here how it goes to black and it's got the green. The sashings on the quilt are going to be a black, but that would be one color choice. And this is the other. Now, at firesidequilts.com, Laura is cutting out all those kits like just a mad person trying to get them all cut because they just came in like last week. And she's got, I think, 10 kits available of the blue and three available for the black. So different choices, you know, different things, different choices, different strokes for different folks. That's what I was working on. Um, and they're all available the kits are. Now, she's not quite sure how much extra fabric she's going to have. So after she gets the kits cut and all packed up, some of them use large quantities of the fabric, but some of them only use a little bit. And so she'll be able to have those available by the yard. Just not yet. So when you go to firesidequilts.com, click into the collections, you'll be able to see this collection. Like what we're doing now is when I'm doing a quilt, she'll have a collection with all the fabrics I used and all the tools I use. This one, same way. Click on this. You'll be able to see the kits are there and then all the different tools that I'm going to talk about today too. And then later, you'll be able to see the leftover fabrics. So when you're looking at these gorgeous fabrics, this is what they really look like in real life. So I'm going to talk to you now about preparing your fabrics to get everything ready to start working on. So when you get your kit, you want to take your fabrics, take them out, press them. And for me, I'm going to press them all with some spray sizing. So this is the Magic Quilt and Craft Spray. It is a spray sizing. It is not only going to get the wrinkles out, but it is going to do stiffen it up because there's tons and tons of half square triangles in this quilt. So having the fabrics pre-stiffened is going to make a huge difference as to the accuracy that you will get in your piecing. People ask me all the time, how do you get your quilt so everything's so precise? And, and I want to say 50% of the reason right here spray sizing at first. Now there's this one and there's also the Mary Ellen's. You choose whichever one floats your boat. But for this one, I love this spray nozzle. This is, this is the bomb for me. Best spray nozzle I've ever used. So I'm going to take my fabrics and I'm going to spray it with this. I did find with this quilt that the fabrics actually did shrink a little bit. So when I, because I'm not a pre-washer of my fabrics, because I'm never worried that much about the shrinkage or the bleeding. Um, but with this, I did find that it shrunk a little bit. So you could pre-wash your fabrics and then spray them with a little bit of sizing. But it maybe goes a little quicker if instead of doing the pre-washing, I laid them down on my ironing board and I sprayed them with the spray sizing. I could see it doing a little bit of shrinkage and then pressed them all dry. All right. So step one, preparing your fabrics. Step two is take your fabrics and fold them in the way that you want to fold them. So if you go back to any of my videos, you're going to see how I fold. And I can't quite get that camera to go far enough away for you to see this whole thing. But I take my fabrics that are 45 inches wide. I'm going to fold them in half. Then I'm going to fold that in half again. So here is my selvage edge. There's the top fold. Here's my bottom edge. So this measures only about 11 inches. So when I'm doing cutting, I'm not having to cut uh, 22 inches. I can just cut 11 inches. I find it to be a lot easier to cut that way. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, there's tons of videos on my website telling you how I, I'm sorry, on my YouTube channel. Then I'm going to take and organize them. So I've organized them in an art bin box. I've made five or six of the blocks now. So you can see the fabulous colors. Keeping them in an art bin box is going to, it's just going to be convenient. Everything's going to be right here. When you've got your fabrics all rolled, it's also a great place to store any extra scraps. So when I have to cut, you know, maybe two, three inch squares for something, I'm going to take the leftover fabric of that and I'm going to just lay them down inside here. So these are all different size strips that I had to cut for this one. Then I'm just going to lay those scraps inside that fold so that when I'm working on the quilt, I can, you know, I'll be, all right, I need to use this blue again. Oops, I took them all out. And I would open up that fold and go, hey, I see I already have a one and a half inch strip cut. So then I don't have to cut another one and a half inch strip. It's just a 
best way to keep yourself organized. Keep those scraps folded up inside the fabrics. Then when the quilt is all done and you know that you've not made any mistakes, then you can put all the fabrics, the remaining fabrics back in your stash and then, you know, use them for other things. Don't know how much will be left here because obviously I'm not done yet. Um, it takes a little while. I found that the this quilt the cutting of it, exceptional instructions. I'm super happy with the instructions for this quilt. Keep in mind, the pattern will be available. It's on pre-order now, but you actually can pre-order the pattern. So if you've got your own fabrics, you could do this whole quilt using your own fabrics. But the instructions for the quilt, really good. Very, very clear, concise instructions. Each one is going to come, this one's kind of shiny, so I have a copy of it instead, but it's going to be four pages of instructions. I think there might even be one block that has more, but it's going to give you, you know, the picture with the fabric, a line drawing telling you placements. Here's the fabrics you're going to pull out. And then it's going to take you through your cutting instructions. The cutting was not hard, but it did take a while. So keep yourself organized, go one at a time. So far, I haven't had found any errors. But what I do do is that I will look at the cutting. And so kind of review the whole thing before you start. And I'll look at it, for instance, on this particular one, it wants me to cut a two and seven eighths inch strip to then cut two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths inch squares because this will be used in the quick piecing technique for half square triangles. For me, red flag, stop there Nancy, don't do that. I am always going to bump that up. So anytime that you're doing half square triangles and the instructions say cut it out something an eighth, uh, three eighths or seven eighths or five eighths, that tells you that they're trying to have you cut that the exact size. I personally want to cut it a little bigger so I can trim mine down to as perfect as I can get with that process, right? So I'm going to take and I take and I'll write on here, cross off that two and seven eighths inches. I'm going to cut those three inches. And here again, quick piecing technique. I'm going to again, cross that out and do three inches. So I'm going to cut these the size I want to for the, for the um, piecing technique I want to use. Okay. So other than that, really, really good instructions. There's a good amount of pressing arrows for the pressing solutions, but not everything. In, for instance, with the half square triangles, they're going to tell you to press that seam open. I am not a presser of seams open on that. So I'm going to use the quilting skills that I know that I work for me, and I'm going to actually press them to one side. So there's that one. And then the other one for cutting, get that stuff is for this block when you look at this block this has this elongated triangle here for that one in the instructions it actually has a template where is it there it is it has a template now you could take that template draw it out on the template plastic like they say in the um, instructions and make that work that's totally an option but I've been doing this a long time. I've got extra tools. I try not to get too many tools. I like tools that can do lots of things, not tools that can just do one thing. And one tool that I have that works great for this kind of thing is the Tri-Rex. Now, you'll find this on um, Fireside Quilts also. She's got to get it pre-ordered. The distributor is all out of them. Let me move that. I double stick tape mine down to it so that I've always got the cardboard with it. So it is the Tri-Rex Triangle Ruler. And honestly, I can't even tell you when I bought this. I've had it forever. Don't even know if it still looks like this. Have had it forever. What I love about it is it makes that elongated triangle where you can do the two of them together and you can use it for strips that are one and a half, two and a half, four and a half, la la, six and a half. And for this, you can use the four and a half and then you do not need the template plastic to do work that. So it's going to make your cutting a lot more accurate. All right. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to show you how you're going to cut for when you're needing these shapes. Because it's not tricky, but it's just something you need to be conscious of. Not even cautious, but conscious. All right. So I'm just going to lay it here. This is on my big um, OmniGrid rat 
matte circle. So the idea here is I first need to cut off a straight edge. Well, just use your Tri-Rex ruler. Line up one of the lines on the cut edge, and I have already cut these four and a half inches, and cut through, right? Then you can take and cut the amount that you need, lining that up and cut, right? Then take the ruler, flip it around, and cut. Now, what's important, super duper duper important, I mean, if you don't do this, you're going to be up a crick without that paddle that we talk about, is that in the process of cutting, keep your layers, I've got two layers there, right? So I've got the good side and the good side, because you have to get reverse images. You have to get one that goes one way and one that goes the other way. So when you're doing this, yes, I'm cutting through both of my fabrics that I need for this block at the same time. Now you don't have to do that, but you have to, I shouldn't say have to, I highly recommend that you cut both layers at the same time. So you've got the um, blue good side and the blue good side so that when you are cutting your pieces, you are going to be getting both sides, the reverse and the regular with each cut right there. I've got both of them that I need. All right. So it's really important that you do that. Now I'm going to collect these, get these off of here. And we're going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to show you a couple of other tools that can be used to make the process of making quilts like this a lot easier. Talked about the ruler already. That's the Tri-Rex. The next things are going to be things that are going to be, all right, let's see. This one is Grip No Slip. Um, it's actually uh, manufactured by a couple here in Michigan, which I think is super cool. Um, and the idea here is that this comes with it is a grippy tape that you can put on the backs of all of your rulers. I don't do that. I don't put them on the backs of all of my rulers. What I do with it is I will put it on the backs of some of my rulers. Now, when we come back from making the half square triangles by the machine, I'm going to show you how that, this works with my two and a half inch ruler and my spinning mat here. Super, super convenient. So this is the grip no slip comes with four strips that are one by three and you can cut those in half to make them actually last longer put them on the backs of your rulers if you want to then the other thing i'm going to show you is this tape um okay totally having a mind blank here i can't remember what the name of it is it's 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 on laura's website so on fireside quilts under the collection and it's cluck something cluck it's a funny name for the company but the idea is this is a it's for all intents and purposes it's a washi tape so it's going to be a low tack masking tape that has three lines a center line a quarter inch line on either side and i'm going to show you how easy it is to piece your half square triangles using this and then the last thing i'll show you when i get to the machine is my seam guide the seam guide that i use all the time all right so i have my squares all right we're gonna go to the machine i'm gonna meet you over there so i've Kind of moved my camera around a little bit. So the good thing about this is that I'm over here at my machine. So here, hello, I'm here. The bad thing is I cannot see chat when I am over here. So can't, if you're chatting with me, I can't answer your question until we come back. All right. So here at the machine, I have put in my on my guidelines seam guide. Now these are going to come in a pack of, I think there's six in the pack. Let me see if I've got my pack. I don't have my pack, but there's going to be the guidelines. And this is my go-to. I use this seam guide literally for everything that I piece. So we're going to use that when we're doing the piecing on the Tri-Rex triangles. But we're going to use this tape when we're doing the half square triangles. The reason we're going to do it is because then we do not have to draw the lines. In the instructions, it'll take tell you to take the back of this and draw that line and then sew a quarter of an inch on either side. Now, if you do not have the ability to, 
if you if you can move your needle, you could just draw that one line and then move your needle to a scant quarter of an inch away. Um, if you don't, if you've got an older machine that just has one position or you're using your featherweight, then you're going to want to draw that line, draw an outside scant quarter inch and another scant quarter inch so that you can piece that. For this technique, we don't need it. So the first thing I need to do is I need to put my needle back to the middle. So now my needle is lined up with this center red line. Because this quilt has so many half square triangles, I am taking my stitch length down to a 2.0. My normal comes up at 2.5. I'm going to do most of this entire quilt with a 2.0. I'm going to take my two fabrics that are for my half square triangle units. Remember, I cut these three inches instead of two and seven eighths inches. And this is how this works. I'm going to line this point up with this quarter inch line, the right hand quarter inch line. I'm going to slide it under my needle, take one or two stitches. Then from here on out, I'm only going to look here at this line. I want this corner of the square to line up all the way up on that quarter inch line. All right. Now I'm going to take another one putting right sides together. I always like to blossom them out, make sure I've got my right sides together. This time, I'm gonna line it up on the left-hand side. The first one I lined up here, now I'm gonna line it up on the left-hand side. And watch how this happens, how underneath my foot pedal, they're just lined up one on top of another. Then I'm gonna pay attention down here. Just my eyes are following this point. They are not following the top. Then I can take another one. There we go. Again, just lining it up, looking down here, lining this up. And you can do all of them that way. That is going to make the whole process of sewing these half square triangles so much easier and quicker because you don't have to do that line drawing that you would normally do. Now, when I come to the end of it, I'm going to run off onto a leader. Get these a little bit out of the way because I like to spin this around. Cut those off. All right, now I'm going to cut it off between each one. I'll just do two this time. All right. Now this time, I'm going to sew on the other side. So I've already sewn on this side, this side. So now I'm going to line. So this one, I must have had this way where I lined it up on the right-hand side. Now I'm going to spin it around, and it's going to line up on the left-hand side. And follow that line all the way up. Now just looking down here at the bottom. Then grab my next one, same idea, looking just down here at the bottom. And bada boom, bada bing. I then have my pieces, my half square triangles, all sewn together. Now I'll show you the rest of those steps when we get back to the um, table. But now that we're here, I want to show you how you can piece these tri -rects, these elongated um, rectangular half square triangle guys. So the first thing I need to do is adjust my stitch, my seam allowance. When I'm doing these triangles, I'm going to line up using here. So I want my needle in the middle. For these, I need a scant quarter of an inch from the edge. So I'm going to now adjust my needle to go to the right. I hope you can see my needle moving. Oops, too far. Now I have moved my needle so that from the edge of my seam guide to my needle is that scant quarter inch. Now you're going to take these two units. This is how they go together. Oops, one layer of red. Thank you very much. And flip them over. And when you're doing this to get the most precise piecing, the idea here is this valley from the edge to the valley should be the scant quarter of an inch. So I'll actually use my little tape here and I'll go, all right, so from this edge to that valley, that's a quarter of an inch, but I'm not going to piece it like that. I'm now going to piece it over here so it is lining up with my seam guide. And oops, want my needle to start down. There we go. And it's going to feed in. And then what I do, now I'm going to come down here, make sure it's lined up properly. And then I rest my finger on top of my seam guide so that the fabric cannot go past the seam line. And then I'm going to get, I mean, look at that seam allowance. It is just, you know, we know there's no perfect, but boy, oh boy, I'm thinking it's the most closest of perfect that I can do. 
So again, line that up so that that tip, that valley is that scant quarter of an inch. Start, then I'll line up the other edge. And this is a bias edge, so you have to be very careful that you're not stretching things. Then I take my finger and I rest it on top of the seam guide so that the fabrics can go along the edge. And then I would finish that, take that to the, um, to the ironing board, and I'll show you how those, I think I've got them all here. All right, so I'm back. All right, um, there they are. All right, so with the elongated triangles, this is how you're going to finish them up. So using, here's the elongated triangle, and I press them all in one direction. That is one thing. In the, um, in the, in the instructions, they have you pressing seams open. I'm not a presser of open, so I'm going to press to one side. Um, it's to save through. Oh, that's what the leader. Yep, this is, Daniel, this is a faff. This is the faff icon. Um, nope, the Viking is the epic and mine is the icon. So if you want to find out more about that, go to Smith Owen Sewing, smithowensew.com. All right. So here I have my triangle done. I've pressed it in one direction. I like to trim these a little bit. So I'm going to use my four and a half inch. Now I did find that glare. Look at that. If I put this in the middle, we get the glare from the light above. I'm going to slide it over here to the side so we don't get no glare on there. All right. So I need to trim this to four and a half by two and a half. So I'm going to use my four and a half inch ruler. And the idea here is this point is a quarter of an inch. I'm going to place it so that that point is on the diagonal line. Then I'm going to do the same thing up here. Up here, it's going to be the two and a quarter inch point. I'm going to put that on that line, this on this line. So then I can trim here and here. Then I'm going to flip it over and now I can tuck it right in to four and a half by two and a half. Trying to get those things, those points. Oops, don't move it. Stop moving, Nancy. There. And that's going to give me my most precise piecing for these units. For the half square triangles, it's even better. And this is where the whole cluck the um the, the the that seam guide stuff comes in so again i'm gonna slide it over here so there's no glare this is my little two and a half inch on the back of it i put the grip no slip okay now i'm going to take my half square triangles so with these half square triangles after you piece them i've got a blue thread and a black thread you're going to cut them in half and I pressed, I actually reviewed my pattern and decided which way to press them. So I then pressed it toward the blue. So I have these where they're all pressed toward the blue. All right. Check out how easy it is to trim this using your little two and a half inch square with that grip on the back. I'm going to take and press it. So you'll see I put that grip right on the diagonal on the ruler. I'm going to take it and tuck it in. So the seam is pressed toward the blue. So that makes this little ledge here. So I can take that grip no slip, tuck it right in there. So it is now level. I'm not rocking my ruler. I do want to make sure I've got it so it's on it. And then using this spinning mat, which is one of my favorite things, you just spin it and cut, spin it and cut, spin it and cut. All right. I don't think it gets any easier than that for cutting down half square triangles. Now I do have the block locks and I use block locks for lots of things, but if you've got the means to have these smaller square um, rulers, this with the little spinning mat is just the quickest, most accurate way I've ever found to make this happen. Okay, so then I've got my perfect half square triangles. All right. So all of these things, the grip, the ruler, the tape, the spinning mats, those are all available at Fireside Quilts. So if you're interested in any of those, take a look at Fireside Quilts. Um, support my friend Laura because Laura supports me. Um, well, she doesn't support me, but like when I need fabric, Laura is there. She's my man. Okay. She's my woman. She's got everything that I need. So go to Fireside Quilts when you're looking for that kind of stuff. So there you go. That's what I'm going to show you today. You're going to follow the instructions. You're going to do the piecing. Use your very best accuracy. Using the seam guide is going to make a 
big difference when you're looking for that scant quarter inch. Um, if you want any more basic information, keep in mind I have a lot of other basic information. So for instance, uh, there's the whole series. Got an entire series for the learning to quilt. This is a 50 some video series on making this quilt on the back of it. So much really great basic information. There's even the um, great basics. So those are where the books are, but if you like peruse the YouTube channel, you're gonna find all of these different basic information. And if you're going, Nancy, I have searched and searched and I cannot find where you explain better the scant quarter inch seam allowance, send me an email and I will send you the link. Guess what? My email is super easy too. Quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. Makes perfect sense. So this is gonna get you through the piecing of your blocks. There are 10 block designs. And so for the entire quilt, you could be making 20 blocks. So of course you could divide that up and you know make two quilts, whatever you wanna choose. But next time, so we're gonna be, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be two weeks from now, we're gonna meet again and I'm gonna show you the best way to put on the sashings and then how to do the mitered border. When you looked at those designs and even the thumbnail that I had for advertising this, it shows that beautiful mitered border. So I'm gonna to talk to you about how to do that too. So I'm looking here, was there any other questions? Yep, thanks, thanks Dan. Um, all right, save, yep, yep, that's what that's for. It's called the quarter inch tape, quarter inch tape. Yeah. So all these things, find them on Fireside Quilts. The link is below. Super simple. Information on my retreat is below. Also, would love to meet you. And and just, just because Dan was actually listening to, um, there's actually going to be a cottage just for guys. We're going to call it the gentleman's only cottage. So because these cottages house like eight to ten people, we're going to have cottages with ladies, but then there's one smaller cottage that is going to be just for gentlemen only. So because guys quilt too, and there's we shouldn't be excluding them from this. So this particular um, place has these great cottages, and so it's going to make possible for us to have, um, what's that called when, when boys and girls can be in the same classes together? I probably just put my foot in my mouth. Let's forget I ever said anything, okay? But everybody can come to my retreat. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.